Hi, am I in now? Her bone cheek here? Yeah, uh, you're board. there, her. We can't see you, but we can hear you. We can hear you, we can't see you. Okay. All right, you're all cut. I bet if I hit this, you'll be able to see me. Ah, there I am. You guys are all set. Hello, everybody. All right. I will call to order the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for Wednesday, December 7, 2022. To all persons interested in or affected by the actions of the Zoning Board of Appeals, you are hereby notified pursuant to Section 11 of Chapter 40A of the General Laws of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and all amendments thereto that a public hearing on the following appeals will be held on Wednesday, December 7, 2022 at the times indicated. The Zoning Board of Appeals public hearing will be held by remote participation methods. Public access to this meeting shall be provided in the following manner. The meeting will be televised via Channel 18 and may also be viewed via the Channel 18 website at http colon slash slash streaming 85.townofbarnstable.us slash cablecast public site. Real-time access to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting is available by utilizing the Zoom link or telephone number meeting ID provided. Public comment can be addressed to the Zoning Board of Appeals by utilizing the Zoom link or telephone number and meeting ID provided. The Zoom link is https colon slash slash townofbarnstable-us.zoom.us slash j slash 86490861655 or you can call 888-475-4499 and entering the meeting ID 864-9086-1655. Applicants, their representatives, and individuals required or entitled to appear before the Zoning Board of Appeals may appear remotely and may participate through accessing the link or telephone number provided above. Documentary exhibits and or visual presentations should be submitted in advance of the meeting to anna.brigham at town.barnstable.ma.us so that they may be displayed for remote public access viewing. Copies of the applications are available for review by calling 508-862-4682 or by emailing anna.brigham at town.barnstable.ma.us. We'll start by an introduction of board members. Herb Bodenseek. I'm present. Paul Bernard. I'm present. Todd Volantis is not present. Mark Hansen. Present. Aaron Webb. I'm present. And Denise Johnson. Present. All right. Notice the recording. Please note this meeting is recorded and broadcast on Channel 18 in accordance with MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20. I must inquire whether anyone is taping this meeting. Please make their presence known. Seeing none, we'll go to minutes. Uh, we have minutes from October 26, 2022 and November 9, 2022. Can I get a motion to approve? Um, both minutes. Uh, this is Paul. I move that we approve both October 26th and November 9th, 2022. Second, Mark. And a roll call <coughs> vote. Um, Harbonsi. Uh, in favor. Paul Pinard. In favor. Mark Hansen. In favor. Aaron Webb. In favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. And I'm also in favor. Uh, so those are approved and starting out today with old business uh, in appeal number 2022-029 Leveroni Marine Leveroni has applied for a special permit pursuant to section 240.91 H3 non-conforming lot and requests a finding under MGL chapter 40 section 6 regarding compliance with floor area ratio the applicant proposed to demolish two existing single story structures and replace the structures with one two story structure on the same lot or smaller footprint. The subject property is located at 14 BOA, Barnstable, Massachusetts, as shown on assessor's map 279, parcel 014. It's located in the residence F1 RF1 zoning district. This is continued from June 8, 2022, and July 13, 2022, and August 24, 2022, and October 12, 2022. Um, and then it was also revised to be one story. Um, so sitting on this will be our regular members, Herb Bodenseek, Paul Pinard, Mark Hansen, Aaron Webb, and myself. Do we have the applicant here? We've got a bunch of yes. um, Attorney yeah, Tardiff, I believe that's you. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, members of the board. Paul Tardiff, I'm an attorney in Yarmouth Court, and I represent Maureen Leveroni. She is also on the call. Um, <laughs> Um, and as you indicated, this is regarding the property at 14 Beale Way in Barnstable. Um, 
So the property is in the uh, RF2 zoning district, contains 4,293 square feet. It's currently improved with two one-story structures built in about 1950. The uh, property has frontage on both Beale Way and on Route 6A. Uh, the existing structures are situated nine and a half feet from Beale Way, uh, 5.7 feet from the northerly side boundary and 2.9 feet from the easterly rear boundary. Uh, the current floor area ratio calculation is currently at 20.6%. Uh, the existing height of the structures, each of them are 13 feet, and both the lot and the structures are both legally pre-existing non-conforming. In, uh, in November of 21, an application for a special permit was made to the board but was later withdrawn without prejudice. A revised application was filed in May of 2022. Uh, after filing, but before hearing, and you just read those continuances, we had uh, uh, we had a lot of discussions with our director butter to the project, and um, with co in cooperation with um, with the, our butter, we made various changes to the plans, and it's taken this long uh, to get here. So, first of all, I want to thank you for all those indulgences with regard to the continuances. Uh, we were not wasting time; we were actually working in conjunction with our, our butter uh, to try and get this right. Um, so uh, you have revised um, elevations and floor plans before you tonight. Um, now the site plan was also amended, uh, but submitted uh, today for your consideration, which I know is very late. Uh, please understand that we were working with our, our butter for the aesthetics of this building and the location and the size, um, but those, those changes also result in changes to the site plan. Um, the difficulty uh, 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 going forward tonight at this point is this. Um, we believe that we meet all the criteria for the special permit. We are not making any of the setbacks uh, any worse. Um, the, we're gonna be under the floor area ratio uh, where all, both structures are gonna remain at 13 feet. Um, the um, the proposed bulkhead is going to be where it's uh, indicated on the plan. The only concern that we realized today was with the lot coverage calculation. Um, we are currently, uh, at least that's what the plan says, at 20.6% lot coverage. Um, and we're not sure about that number. Uh, we think it might be a little bit higher um, or it might be lower, but we don't know. And so it makes it very difficult for this board to make a determination as to whether or not we meet that criteria of the special permit. I, I can assure you this, um, that the structures that you have on the plan before you uh, are not going to change in any way, regardless of what that lot coverage is, except to get smaller. They're not going to get, get any closer to lot lines. They're, we're not going to increase the height. We're not going to increase the size. Um, what we're working with on a, such a small lot is a, uh, a, a few square feet, and we need to know what we actually have uh, on the ground. Um, it, it matters because uh, we have a proposed bulkhead, um, which may or may not be allowed. And so we don't want this board to approve something that um, leaves the billing, the billing department with no way of uh, determining whether or not it was an approved plan or not. Um, we, we filed with full intention to go forward tonight. I, I think, um, w you know, what we're going to need to do and ask this board, and believe me, I'm not asking lightly, is for another month just to... And, and the reason I asked for a month is because I know that's your next hearing is in January. Um, so we can set that lot coverage calculation properly. And again, um, we uh, under the criteria, we have to leave it at that number or less. And that's what we're trying to do. Um, I know the abutters, um, some of them are here. I know some of them are here. I know council, uh, Mr. Ford, who I worked with uh, a lot on this is here as well. Um, uh, just to assure them that, you know, we are true to uh, what we proposed and what we uh, what we want to have approved 
but we just don't feel we can go forward without uh, understanding what that law of coverage is. So I apologize to them. Um, it was um, a last minute because of the uh, final approvals for the structures. And um, so here we are. If, if the board is inclined to hear it, um, the abutters, obviously, we, we have no objection to that. Uh, we do want to talk about be away and how construction is going to go. But again, it might be a little premature. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, it's up to you. I, I Again, I apologize, but um, I'll take your cue on this one. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it probably makes sense if, if you guys aren't on a time crunch here, if we can just keep it clean and, and continue it when when you guys have everything finalized and it's one complete package. Um, I also, you know, we just received, we received the revised plan today too, which was um, like six hours ago or something. Um, so yeah, I think if, you know, I'll, I'll ask any of the board members if, if they have any thoughts on it, but I'd be inclined that we continue it until one of our January meetings, um, if that's agreeable to, to everyone. Paul, do you have any thoughts on that? No, I think that we, want to, we want to get it right. And, I, and so I think the bottom line is that Attorney Tardo is asking for a, a one month continuance. Yep. And, uh, and uh, I would agree to that. Okay. Attorney Tardo, do you, would you like it at the first meeting? Our, our first meeting of the month is scheduled, I believe, Anna, to be in person, correct? No, both January meetings are uh, scheduled to be by, by Zoom. Okay. And uh, okay. the first one is the 11th, and the second one is the 25th of January. Okay. Attorney Tardif, does, do you prefer one or the other? The, the 11th is fine. Uh, we should have this plan ironed out in the next few days. And again, I'm going to not only file it um, with your board, but I'll also make sure that Mr. Ford has a copy, as I've been <laughs> dealing with him, um, to make sure that he's okay with it. And um, we just, you know, again, I... I I'm reluctant to ask for that continuance, Mr. Chairman, because I know that we've been given a lot of them, um, but understand that we're not uh, foot dragging here. We're just trying to get it right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'll make a motion that we continue appeal number 2022-029 to our January, did you say nine, uh, January 11th, 2023 uh, remote meeting. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Herb seconds. Uh, roll call vote. Herb Odensee. In favor. Paul Pennard. In favor. Mark Hansen. In favor. Aaron Webb. In favor. And I'm also in favor. Um, and Anna will just note that I did assign members to this, but Denise was present. So if someone was is not um, available, Denise would be able to um, mull it in. Sure. All right. So Thank you. moving along. Thank you, Attorney Tardiff. We'll see you next month. Have a good holiday. Thank you, too. All right. Moving on to new business. In appeal number 2022-052, Gregory Jones, architect representing property owner Ann B. Pellegrino, has applied for a special permit pursuant to 240-471B, family apartments, to replace an existing guest cottage with a one-bedroom guest cottage and attached three-car garage with an additional bedroom, bathroom, and home office above. The space will be occupied by family members. The subject property is addressed at 320 Carriage Road, Osfo, Massachusetts, as shown in assessor's map as parcel 0700017002, located in the residence F1 RF1 zoning district. Uh, so again, sitting on this will be our regular members, Hart Bodensteek, Paul Pennard, Mark Hansen, Aaron Webb, and myself. Mr. Chairman, may I real quick? I'm gonna. Is, would it be okay, uh, if Mr. Denise Jones? Sat... Mr. Chairman, yep, can you hear me? That's fine. Would it be okay if Denise took my spot? Yeah, I can hear you. That's internet, fine. My internet connection is terrible, so I'm gonna log off and have David log me back in here. Okay. Denise, Thanks. are you okay to sit on this? <laughs> You're muted. Denise, Denise, are you okay to sit on this? I was muted. I have dogs running around, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So um, you'll be sitting on this. And um, Mr. Jones, if you'd like to go ahead. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm Greg Jones, architect for the project at 320 Carriage Road um, for Ann Pellegrino, who's the owner of the property. 
Anne and her daughter uh, Carla are present as well if you guys have any questions of them once I'm through. Um, briefly, the existing property had uh, a two-story main house built in 1929. It had a, a one-story guest cottage separate from the main house built in, uh, I believe it was 1966. Um, what, we, what we've done is tear down the existing guest cottage um, which was uh, which had issues with mold and water infiltration. Um, so rather than renovate that, we decided to build a new guest cottage. Um, the The project was really started because Mrs. Pellegrino um, lived in the main house, but her sleeping quarters were on the second floor of the house. And as she's getting older, it's obviously a little more difficult to use the full facility without having to get up and down the stairs. So the idea was to build a new guest house. Mrs. Pellegrino would live in the one-story guest house, and the main house would be turned over to her daughter and her daughter's family. That's Carla Cabot. That's on the Zoom call as well. So the goal was to, to have a project that in the end would allow the Pellegrino family to share the house but have their private quarters. It would let Mrs. Pellegrino age in place. The new guest cottage is all on one story, bathroom, bedroom, living room, and a small kitchen. Um, and the main house and the <coughs> guest cottage and garage are connected via a, a breezeway link. So when we initially submitted for a building permit, um, we enclosed that link with glass doors and windows. Um, that presents several problems that became clear as the project began, uh, namely that in order to service the pool, uh, workmen and, and actually maintain the rear yard, servicemen would have to enter physically enter the house through one door, walk through the breezeway, walk through a rear door to access the backyard and the pool. There's really no other way to get around to the pool area. So that's, a, that's an issue. The other issue is when guests come to use the pool, they can't simply go through a gate and have access to the pool. Mrs. Pellegrino or her daughter would always have to be home, let them through the doors and into the pool. And lastly, and I think probably one of the more pressing reasons is while the family wants to share a house together, they also would like to have some privacy when it makes sense. So having an open link with just a roof and a floor joining them and separate entrance doors inside that link from a useful perspective makes more sense. So in speaking with the building commissioner, um, he said one avenue would be to pursue a special permit for a family apartment. This would allow our guest cottage, in essence, Mrs. Pellegrino's new guest cottage, uh, to be physically separate from the main house and not be seen as a second single family house on the property. So we meet all of the provisions of the, of the family apartment regulations, um, the size, the number of bedrooms, um, and I guess the, the other thing that's, that's important is that this doesn't look like a two-family structure. And I think all along, whether it was enclosed or not, the goal of this project was to make it look like a big rambling summer house. Um, so in my opinion, and, and I think the Pellegrino's opinion, um, the finished product looks like a big single-family house. If you're familiar with Oyster Harbors and particularly Carriage Road, as you approach Mrs. Pellegrino's property, which is the last one on Carriage Road, there's a number of large homes um, on either side of the road. Many of them have the same setup. They've got a large main house, an open breezeway. Some, is a, some of them are port cochers where cars drive through and on the other side is a little guest cottage. So there's several other properties, one of them actually adjacent to this property that has a very similar setup. So one of the other goals of the special permit is that this, this project um, doesn't detract from the neighborhood context. And, you know, in my opinion, it doesn't. Um, so I, I think if you've seen the drawings, you've seen a couple pictures, I think I submitted of uh, the guest cottage as it existed prior to construction, and then the project as it, as it is now under construction. So I'm asking you to consider, you know, our special permit. I think overall it's in keeping with the, um, the spirit of the family apartment regulation. It will allow Mrs. Pellegrino to stay in her home, her family to stay in the other portion of the home. Mrs. Pellegrino's here, if you, if you were to ask her, this home will never change hands. Um, it's been in the family for over 30 years. Um, they'll sign the affidavits that it will never be rented or leased. 
uh, all the stipulations that were put in the, uh, the suggested findings. So I'm happy to answer questions. And as I say, Mrs. Pellegrino and her daughter Carla are here, uh, as is the contractor, Ron Gerard. Um, so I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. All right, thank you, Mr. Jones. Um, is there anyone from the board that has questions for the applicant? Yeah, uh, Mr. Jones, um, yes. the, the way this is written is that you are, um, the applicant uh, is seeking permission to uh, demolish and construct uh, as well as occupancy by family members or is it just, you just wanna take what's there uh, already built and, and make it a family apartment? No, so we, we've already demolished the single family guest cottage that was there prior to construction. So that's, that's already gone. And we got a building permit by virtue of enclosing the breezeway. Um, so the, the guest cottage is, is already gone. Because you can't build in Oyster Harbors in the summertime, this project has taken all of last, you know, the, the nine months between summers, there was a, uh, no work during this past summer. And this, this season, you'll be finishing the project. So I, I, overall, the project is 75% done. Um, so what we're asking really is the permission not to enclose the breezeway. Uh, Does that answer your question, Paul? No, I mean, well, well, uh, that's that's a case for the building commissioner, isn't it? I mean, well, we don't care if the Yes and no. So I, I went to the building commissioner when we got our building permit, and I had suggested that we prefer not to enclose this breezeway with, with doors and glass windows. And he said, well, I can't give you a building permit if you don't enclose it, because I see it then as two separate single family homes. So rather than hold up the building permit, we said we agreed we would enclose it. And he had suggested, why don't you apply for a special permit for the family apartment use? Because he felt we met the criteria for that. So that's why we're here before you. Would it not also fit the um, ADU bylaw or no? Yeah. It, it does. It I think there's some more ADU specific. By right? Not by right. There were some specifics that we did not meet for the ADU regulations. I can't recall them off the top of my head. Um, but the recommendation was to go for the special, uh, for the family apartment because we we met the requirements of that. And it really imposed no hardship on my client to agree to the stipulations. So uh, let, let me ask you a, a series of questions here. Sure. Uh, in the definition of family apartments, is the, um, is the apartment unit greater than 50% of the square footage of the dwelling? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, does the family apartment have more than two bedrooms? No. Okay. Is, um, will the occupancy of the family apartment unit be greater than two adult family members? Adult family members? No, the intent is Mrs. Pellegrino will live okay. in, the, in the guest cottage and her children will live and grandchildren will live in the main house. Okay. Um, and so it's it's a it's a defined as a detached structure from the primary structure. Without enclosing the breezeway, <laughs> that's that's the way the building commissioner felt. Okay. That's so according to um, section two forty paragraph one twenty five c, it meets all four criteria for family apartment. I, yes, and the only subjective correct. one that, that is not cut and dry is, is the one that speaks to, and bear with me for a second, um, does the overall look of the property, I can't find the specific uh, stipulation here, oh, the single family nature of the property and of the accessory nature of the detached structure are preserved. So that, that's sort of the subjective piece that um, I think it does, but hopefully you'll feel the same way. Based on the elevations, I would agree with that, obviously. Yeah. yeah, I don't see an issue here, Mr. Chairman. No, and the family apartment really only limits their use. We don't we don't really care whether they do that or the ADU. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so if someone wants to make finding, I'm like, sorry, no, we have to open public comment. Sorry, any other board members have any questions? Any other questions? No. Or, yeah. Or, uh, 
So what about the um, three-car carriage house garage with the office and bedroom and bathroom above? Yes. That's not even an issue? It, you have that at right somehow? By right, I mean? Not, it, it's, it's, it's allowed if this special permit is approved. Okay. That's and what he's here for. Okay, and the guest cottage wouldn't be an issue. I'm, I'm just looking at your site plan, and I, it, mm -hmm. there's no uh, existing plan. And I think I have it figured out now after listening to you, but so. So the, the site plan itself, does, it's a little hard to see, but the, the site plan shows um, the existing guest cottage. It sort of has a little hatching inside the rectangle. Um, as well as the existing main house has some hatching around the perimeter of the main house. Yeah, but that's not the um, one story of uh, the pool house to be removed. That's not. Uh, the yes, that, that, it's called the pool house in, in the uh, site plan. It's, a, it's actually a guest house. It had a bedroom, kitchen, bathroom. Okay, so you're going to keep, that's why you need the family apartment in order to maintain the uh, kitchen um, that's so correct. Like that. Right. Uh, huh. I mean, it, it, it all comes down to if, if we kept the enclosure at the breezeway, you know, the glass uh, doors and windows, we wouldn't be here because we'd be as of right. But it, it really, having that enclosure really stymies some of the uses Mrs. Pellegrino would like to have for the property. Hmm. You can't, I mean, I'm sure you've thought of all the uh, solutions, so I'm not going to suggest yeah. any like those sliders that you can have like six uh, panels that all just disappear. So I'm sure you've thought of that. Yeah. But, um, and my only question is, I guess she won't be staying there in the winter. Or no. Be... Mrs. Pellegrino can answer that for you. Oh, plus the the pool house has a kitchen and everything else, so there's no need for her to really travel back and forth between the main correct from the cottage okay i get it i get it i think my question <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> all right so let's open for public comment we didn't receive anything um in the in communication to anna i don't believe right anna that's correct mr chair all right uh david is there anyone on the call that would, wants to speak to this <laughs> I don't, I don't believe so. <clears throat> if there is anybody, though, now is your time to speak. Yeah, I see. I see uh, Mr. Starr raising his hand. Um, here. Can I make a comment, Go. Mr. Dewey? Go ahead, um, Councilor Starr. Thank you very much. Um, I don't have the plans in front of me. I'm still confused about um, what uh, what we, we were just talking about. The garage is there. Mm -hmm. Is there a three car garage on the property now? No, there's not. Is there a building permit for a three-car garage? There's a well. There's a building permit for this entire project, provided I enclose the the breezeway. So the building she's going to live in has a three-car garage underneath it, alongside of it. Yeah. Okay. And a, and a, and an office above the three-car garage. Correct. Okay. Um, and what is what is the little building on the south side of the property? That's a, a, a two-car garage with a. a uh, caretaker's apartment above. So there's another apartment on the property? Well, it's a it's a caretaker's bedroom and bathroom. Does somebody live there year round? Um, Mrs. Pellegrino, no. No, no one. Does somebody there. live there in the summer? Rarely. It's not in very good shape. But it still exists, right? It exists. No, no one, no one lives there. But it's an apartment. Yes. It's there. Yep. Okay. Then, an open plan. It's a one big space, and then a little bathroom to the side. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Okay. Any other members of the public have any comments? All right. Seeing none, I'll make a motion to close public comment. I need a second. Awesome. Second that. <clears throat> All right, roll call vote to close public comment. Herb Odensee? In favor. Paul Pernard? In favor. In favor. 
Denise Johnson. In favor. And I am also in favor. Um, so public comment is closed. It brings it back to the board um, for us to deliberate. Does anyone have any thoughts or uh, on this? It is a lot on, on a lot to, to Councilor Starr's point, um, but I think it does fall within the intent of the bylaw. I agree with that. And uh, this is a like type property for a lot of the properties that are in there. And quite honestly, I mean, I think this is an interpretation at the town level because my understanding was always that if the roof line was attached, it was considered an attached dwelling, but that's neither here nor there. The decision has been made. Um, I, I think logistically it makes sense. I think architecturally it makes sense. Um, I like this project. Mr. Jones, is the septic system encompassing all of, like, including the um, the caretaker's apartment in yeah, so a, any, bedroom, a bedroom count for the, the, yeah, sewer, the septic? That's correct. An entirely new septic system was installed as part of the project, including the uh, garage, the main house, the guest cottage, and the, the addition to the side of the guest cottage. Brand new system. Okay. And, and we're at 7% lot coverage, so it's a fairly large lot. Yeah. Huh. All right, anyone else from the board have any uh, thoughts or does someone want to make findings? Yeah, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm looking at the uh, section 240, um, paragraph 7047.01. And it says that um, a family apartment should be located within a single family dwelling or connected to the single family dwelling in such a manner as to allow for internal access between the units. Mm -hmm. This does not meet that criteria if that's still valid. Mr. Jones, correct mm -hmm. me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's why we were discussing we're the breeze here, right? That's right. Because we're, we're, we're not, if we remove the, the door and the window on each side of the breezeway that we currently have to get our permit, um, the commissioner felt it was two separate structures, two separate single family homes on the property. Why would it be an ADU then? instead of a family, I mean, if it doesn't qualify as a family apartment, why wouldn't it qualify as an ADU? Well, I think it does qualify as a, as a family apartment. Well, we just agreed that it didn't, unless you need, unless you need relief from the fact that there, that there is a apartment, um, a family apartment should be located within a single family dwelling or connected to the single family dwelling in such as a manner, in such a manner as to allow for internal access between the units. Without the enclosed patio, it does not allow for internal access between the units. So if it, so it does not <laughs> comply with, with uh, Article 5, Section 240-471 family apartments but it may apply to accessory dwelling units. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. As I say, I did meet with the building commissioner and this was the avenue that he felt best suited what we were trying to accomplish. So oh, we do have a roof over it and we have a floor under it to connect the two. Right, but it doesn't meet the criteria as, as the law st stipulates, which means you would need a variance, I believe, instead of a special permit. If you want to call it a family apartment. No, Paul, the special well, the special apart the special apartment allows for it to be a detached structure. That's no. why it's not a, a family apartment by right. That's why they're here. Okay. As I said, chapter two forty, section forty seven point one, I just read. It doesn't meet that. So is there a, something that's superseded? Allows that? a special permit. 240s 47.1b allows a special permit for a family apartment in a detached structure. So if, if I were to add, you know, onto that, that the building commissioner felt without enclosing this, it would be a detached structure and thereby you'd have Correct. to go for the special permit because it's a detached uh, structure. Yeah, I stand corrected, uh, Mr. Chairman, you're correct there. I see, I see B, I was reading A. I was reading it. As it is, it is confusing. Worse than Paul. <laughs> yeah, I was reading. Paul, do you want to make findings? Seeing your, your full. <laughs> your well, so, so, I'm on it. By, 
So my punishment is, is, is It's to read the fun. Sure. <laughs> so give me a second here to, to uh, get back. Wait a minute, hang on. I'm here if you need. All right, here we go. This has to do with Appeal 2022-052 Pellegrino. Gregory Jones Architect, representing property owner Ann B. Pellegrino, has applied for a special permit pursuant to 240-47.1B Family Apartments. The applicant seeks to replace an existing detached one-bedroom guest cottage with a one-bedroom guest cottage detached three-car garage with an additional bedroom, bathroom, and home office above. The space will be occupied by family members. The subject property is addressed at 320 Carriage Road, Osterville, Mass. is shown on assessor's map as parcel 0701702. It is located in residential F1, RF1 zoning district. I find that the application falls within the category specifically accepted in the ordinance for a grant of a special permit. Section 240-47.1B allows a special permit for a family apartment in a detached structure. I also find that a site plan review is not required for single family residential dwellings. I find that after an evaluation of all the evidence presented, the proposal fulfills the spirit and intent of the zoning ordinance and would not represent a substantial detriment to the public good or the neighborhood affected. I also find that the proposed family apartment would not substantial, not be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood than the existing dwelling. I find a single family nature of the property and of the accessory nature and of the accessory nature of detached structure are preserved. Those are my findings. All right, do we have a second? Second. second. <clears throat> Sydney second, so we'll do a roll call vote. Our vote seek. Uh, I'm in favor. Paul Pinard. I'm still kind of confused, but I'll be in favor. <laughs> I'm in favor. I'm in favor. Mark Hansen. I'm in favor. Denise Johnson. I'm in favor. <clears throat> and I am also in favor. Um, and then, Paul, do you have some conditions? Yes. Uh, according to staff report, dated sometime. Help me out somebody here. Uh, it was November 15th, 2022. Okay, dated November 15th, 2022. Uh, there are... Uh, Mr. On. Chairman? Yeah. Um, quick question. So uh, I see on, <clears throat> we've got one through whatever the number is six, there. So five. Ref, re, one through five, sorry, six? No, six. It, so it references the site plan and I, I guess my question is, does the site plan, um, Anna, does that include the elevations that were submitted? Or is that, can we reference the site, the elevations that were submitted now? I'm assuming they're different than the original drawings. Or is that a, revi is that a revised drawing with the, um, with the pass through? The, the board can reference the, the new elevations. Absolutely. I, I can put that in. Okay, so if we could just maybe, I don't know if that's in addition to site development or if that's just its own, um, if that's its own number. I would add in the elevations to number two, if that's appropriate yeah. for the board. Okay, thank yeah, you. Really good point, Mark. Yeah, that should be added in number two, I believe. <clears throat> so, okay. Uh, proposed for us, so, uh, uh, let's see, I, I will need, uh, let's see, through, 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 by cell engineering, dated August 23rd, 2021, with the last revision, I want to strike last, with a revision date of October 14th, 2021, and a last revision, uh, which I guess you received today, Anna? No, these these have been on file for quite a while. That was Leveroni, Paul, that came in today. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. So, or, uh, uh, sorry, the other, the other, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's been revised since October 14th, am I correct? If, if I may, there's uh, in the package, 
Uh, there are several drawings. There are two elevations, one of them showing them with the enclosure and another drawing showing them without the enclosure. Um, and what's the date on that? Um, the one with the without the enclosure is revision date October 4th, 2021. And it's drawing number A3.00. And I think that's in the package of, um, okay. what, do you, what do you call them? Exhibit. Fine, uh, not fine. <clears throat> Laser fish. Yeah, there you go. And this is referenced as um, A3.00 rep uh, revision two, if that helps. Okay, Correct. Can, we, can we put that in there because the number two of my proposed additions here, conditions, speaks with a last revision date of October 14th, 2021. And yeah, that was for the site plan, I believe. That was for the site plan. We're just talking about the elevations here. Uh, they have a they have a date of October fourth, twenty twenty one. It's a drawing A dash three point oh one. Okay. Okay. Then. Uh, All right. So talking uh, items. And are uh, you comfortable with that? Do you... Yes. Conditions Sorry, one. Go ahead, Paul. Through, come through one through six as amended. Um. I need. Uh, All right. I'll second, second that. And we'll take a roll call vote on it. Herb Odenseek. In favor. Paul Pernard. In favor. Mark Hansen. In favor. Denise Johnson. In favor. And I am also in favor. Um, so you have your special permit, Mr. Jones. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for coming in. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a, Thank you. Have, a, welcome. have a good welcome. holiday. Thank you. You too. Our, our last order for business tonight, bill number 2022-021, Lewis Wellemir has filed an appeal of an administrative official's decision in accordance with section 240-88 appeals. The building commissioner issued a notice of, of zoning violation in order to cease and desist on March 3rd, 2022, which states that the total number of dwelling units are four, three units in the main dwelling and one in the detached barn workshop are a zoning violation under chapter 24011A1 in the RF2 residence F2 zoning district. The subject property is located at 4380 Main Street, Barnstall, Massachusetts, as shown assessor's map 351 as parcel 042. It's located in the residence F2 RF2 zoning district. Um, sitting on this again will be regular members. Uh, Aaron, are you back? I All right, am so back. Yes. Are you good? Are you good? You got good connection? I'm good. Good connection. Thank you. All right. So we'll have our regular members, Herb Odenseek, Paul Pinard, Mark Hansen, Aaron Webb, and myself. Um, so Attorney Sabat, I believe you're here. Um, if you want to sort of explain what's going on or what your position is here, and we'll figure out, you know, what we're doing moving this forward or, or not. Okay. So, um, I'm here with in my office, and Louis Villamar, Villamar is here with me. He's uh, sitting on the other side of my desk, so he's present with me. Um, we did uh, this structure at 4380 does have three units in the main house, and there is an accessory uh, unit, a barn in the back where Mr. Villamar lives, and he rents out the other three units. We timely filed an appeal from the order of the building commissioner, and I have uh, obtained some extensions before getting this on the agenda because we were trying to find a way that we might lawfully uh, preserve these three units uh, and allow him to continue to rent these, these uh, units out. This is how he lives. This is how he survives. Uh, but we haven't really been able to find an alternative to that. So I've spoken with the building commissioner. In his uh, order, he suggested that we could apply for a building permit to remove two of the units and also apply for an accessory dwelling unit permit to him. And we, uh, my client is probably going to do that. And I spoke with the commissioner. He wants to meet with us to discuss this. And so he suggests meeting with us the first week in January. Um, that was his time frame. 
And so what I would like to do is to request an extension tonight or a continuance of this hearing so that we can meet with him and, and hopefully can resolve this and which event we would then uh, withdraw this appeal. But okay. I would like to have some time to do that. I think that's fine. So just to clarify, because we did receive a letter from you saying you are no longer involved in this appeal, but you are right. clearly back I am, involved. I am back in, appeal, in I am I'm now back involved. I won't go into uh, okay. why or what happened, but I'm involved in this now. Okay. Um, do you have a specific date in mind that you prefer, the 1st January or 2nd January meeting? or? I would like to go out to February 8th. Uh, okay. We're meeting. We're, we have to. I have to get in contact with him. He suggested first week in January. So hopefully, if we if we adhere to that schedule, then that would give us enough time. But if things get disrupted, you know, if it depend upon his schedule, we're pretty much available any time. Uh, so I'd okay. like to go to February eighth if that's agreeable. Okay. And then you can see us. Then you can see us live. Yep. All right, I will make a motion to continue appeal number 2022-021 to February 8th, 2023. Uh, at second. Oh, Thank you. One gazoo take, one second. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll take a roll call vote on the continuance. Herb Bodenseek. In favor. Paul Pinard. In favor. Mark Hansen. I'm in favor. Aaron Webb. In favor. And I am also in favor. Uh, so Attorney Sabat, that's out till February 8th, 2023. Right. Very good. Thank you very much. I appreciate and, it. Uh, Attorney Sabat, can I also request that you uh, send another letter, submit another letter that say you're back on board? I shall do that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. All right, correspondence, Cape Cod Commission DRI decision dated November 3rd, 2022 for the Centerville Gardens Wireless Communication Tower resubmission. Um, I believe that's all we received. Anna, was there anything else that we received? No, that, that was, was it. Thank you. Okay. Um, upcoming hearings, January 11th, 2023, January 25th, 2023, and February 8th, 2023. That meeting would be in person. Anything not anticipated from anyone? Nope. <clears throat> All right. I will we'll take a motion to adjourn. So move. So move. Second. And a second. Second, Mark. Mark yep. Uh, roll call. Oh, hi. Uh, did you say my, you're breaking Are you there? Up, but, uh, I'm in favor of that. Um, Paul Pinard. In favor. Mark Hansen. In favor. Aaron Webb. I'm in favor. And Denise Johnson. In favor. And I am also in favor. So we are adjourned for 2022.